Greetings viewers. There was a recent altercation between Fox News's Greg Jarrett and Palestinian legal advisor and uh, one-time spokesperson for the PLO, Diana Butu. <clears throat> so who's Diana Butu? Well, here she is uh, with the former head of the World Bank, James Wolfenson, uh, here in this article from camera exposing just some of her many lies. Uh, we see that the President of the United States, George Bush, has blown her kisses. So, obviously a fairly important lady. And here she is with Ryan Dawson, also known as Ryanti Neocons. And viewers familiar with my recent videos will know that uh, I've tried to engage him in a debate on issues surrounding Israel, Zionism and so on. Um, this Fox News supposed expose where they supposedly owned Diana Butu is a cleverly, cleverly crafted piece of propaganda, anti-Israel propaganda in fact, as I hope to demonstrate. Back now to the Middle East, Palestinian protesters taking to the streets in the West Bank. They are clashing with Israeli forces, Palestinians throwing rocks and stones at Israeli soldiers. At least 360 Palestinians have been killed since the raid began, many Hamas militants, but also a number of civilians. Joining us now live, Palestinian legal advisor Diana Butu, who, as I understand, is live from Ramallah. Thank you for being with us. The Israeli military launched its attack on Gaza because Hamas simply would not stop firing rockets into Israel. Would you agree that Hamas is to blame for all of these terrible Palestinian deaths? Absolutely not. Uh, you are uh, blaming the victim. It has been proven time and again that even when Hamas does not fire a single rocket, and it's important to note that these rockets do not have explosive heads, that nonetheless Israel continues to fire upon Gaza. Over the course of the past two years, there have been close to 2,000 Palestinians in Gaza who have been killed. And most recently, when, Palestine, when Americans were celebrating the election victory of Barack Obama, Israel used that opportunity to go into the Gaza Strip and kill Palestinians. So this is not at all a question of Israel simply responding. It's a question of Israel initiating. And this is a violation of international law. Boy, you are completely misrepresenting the facts, but I'll move on. Hamas. Of course, Jarrett's correct. She's lying through her teeth. Why then does he just move on? Why not spend a little time exposing her lies? After all, for any of Fox's viewers who are undecided or just completely unsure of the facts surrounding this particular conflict, there's no way for them to know that she's lying. Why doesn't he expose her? Boy, you are completely misrepresenting the facts, but I'll move on. Hamas deliberately places that its command true. sites and arsenals in heavily populated residential neighborhoods, including schools. They use innocent mm -hmm. civilians, including children, as human shields, so isn't Hamas also to blame for the very high death toll in Gaza? Absolutely not. You have never been to the Gaza Strip. You don't know what it looks like. The Gaza Strip is a very densely populated area, and the places that the Israelis are targeting are, are not military installations, but actually government offices that were once the offices of the President Mahmoud Abbas. There are hospitals that they have targeted, there are schools that they have targeted, there are mosques that they have targeted. It is wrong to be blaming the victims and saying that it is somehow the victim's fault for the fact that Israel is using U.S. weaponry to kill Palestinians. That is simply incorrect. These are war crimes and Israel should be prosecuted for carrying out its war crimes and you should not be defending them. Diana, Notice how this has become a battle between two personalities, between two egos, and that there is no actual real discussion of any of the facts using U.S. weaponry to kill Palestinians. That is simply incorrect. These are war crimes, and Israel should be prosecuted for carrying out its war crimes, and you should not be defending them. Diana Buddha, you're wrong again. I have been to Gaza. I spent a lot of time in Gaza City, Gaza Strip, the West Bank. I've met with uh, terrorists there. I know what they're doing. Uh, and you're simply wrong in assuming that I've never been to Gaza, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Diana you are Buda. wrong in your, you are Diana wrong Buda, in good day to you. Good day to you. There. Okay, so what are some of the likely effects of this frankly childish charade? Well, among Fox's pro-Israel viewers who already know that Butu's lying, um, they will likely feel a certain sense of relief and think that, oh well, at least Fox News is telling the truth. Right? For those 
who consider themselves pro-Palestinian, this will just be used as further proof that people who are pro-Israel, you know, can't stage an argument and have to dismiss and cut off someone who is pro-Palestinian. It will also feed into the mindset that the Western media is, you know, controlled by Zionists or, you know, some similar line. But perhaps most importantly, for those among Fox's viewers who are undecided and unsure of the facts, they are most likely going to be steered in a pro-Palestinian direction. Why? Well, because they have no way of knowing whether it's Jarrett or Butu lying. And, <laughs> and speaking for myself, when, when I see an exchange like this and see someone just being dismissed like that, I tend to take, you know, tend, my bias tends to go in favour of the person just being dismissed like that, because whatever else may be said about Butu, she wasn't really given an opportunity to say anything very much. Um, and then what she did say was just dismissed as though she was like a silly little child or something. No, she's not a silly little child. She's a very cunning operative and she needs to be exposed and Fox failed to do this. So no, Fox News did not own Diana Butu. Fox News and Diana Butu owned Fox's audience. Of course, refuting Butu's lies would have been a relatively trivial matter, just as would be exposing her fraudulence such as asking why someone ostensibly so concerned with the human rights of the Gazan and West Bank Arabs would be an advisor to an organisation created by the co-architect of the Nazi final solution. Fox could have easily exposed to its viewers important and pertinent facts, such as the CIA's involvement with sponsoring the PLO, or with, you know, other numerous facts, such as um, the fact that Hamas and Fatah, while on the surface at the theatrical level, are enemies, actually cooperate behind the scenes. Other pertinent facts could have been revealed to Fox's audience as well, such as the utter treachery of the Israeli establishment, who are cooperating with all of this. Of course, Fox had an opportunity to reveal some of these facts to their audience a few years ago when they interviewed Professor Francisco Gil White, who at that time had just been illegally fired from the University of Pennsylvania, for apart from anything, the main thing being that he revealed the Nazi origins of the Palestinian movement. His superiors at, U at the University of Pennsylvania openly acknowledged that they could find no fault with his work. They just didn't like the conclusions he'd reached. In what was supposed to be a half-hour interview on Fox's Hannity and Combs show, um, they tried to distract Gil White with a red herring about 9-11, they tried to insinuate that he was paranoid, and all the usual sort of tricks that Hannity and Combs often play on people they're interviewing. When this didn't work, after approximately five minutes, they simply cut him off. Sound familiar? Fox News is not pro-Israel. And the sooner some of you people out there who think it is wake up to this fact, the better. And why would anyone expect Fox to be pro-Israel? Its boss, Rupert Murdoch, likens News Corporation to the Jesuit order. Apparently Adolf Hitler said something similar about the Nazi party. And Murdoch himself is a Knight of St. Gregory. And much like many of these other organisations, such as the Knights of Malta, um, serve Vatican agendas, not Zionist agendas. Here's a recent uh, front page of Australia's national newspaper, also owned by News Corporation. Unfortunately, time doesn't permit me to go into a great de deal of detail analysing this, but um, I'll just uh, highlight a couple of things. For a start, if you look below the main photo, uh, here's the article, Stopping the Rockets, a Strategic Necessity. So, in other words, they're reducing this whole thing to little more than a game of chess. But perhaps what is more of a concern is a subliminal. Israel ready to slice through heart of Gaza. Now, apart from being a lot of incendiary rhetoric, I mean, Israel ready to slice through heart of Gaza, I mean, it's, it's just silly. <laughs> but look above it, the heart of the nation. This will sort of bounce off many people's subconscious. Israel ready to slice through the heart of the nation. The Jews, ready to slice through the heart of the nations. 
Now, does that theme sound familiar? It should. That theme was uh, popularized very much by a fairly infamous document, which was once very well believed, and even though it has been refuted numerous times, is becoming believed more and more again. I think many of you know which document I'm talking about. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. A lot of you need to wake up very, very quickly. After all, we know what happened last time. That sort of nonsense was widely believed, don't we? Catch you later.